Philippines reports a new record high of 22,366 fresh COVID-19 cases in one day on Monday, August 30. This is the fifth straight day the new cases recorded by the Department of Health exceeded the 15,000 mark. Monday's jump in infections raises the country's total COVID-19 caseload since the pandemic began to almost 2 million. The number of single-day COVID-19 infections recorded in August stood at 387,237. This tally is more than a two-fold increase than the listed 176,406 infections reported in July. The DOH also recorded 222 fatalities, bringing the total death toll to 33,330. Meanwhile, recoveries were up by 16,864 for a total of 1,794,278. The DOH reports a positivity rate of 27.5%, meaning one in four people tested turned out positive for the virus. The Philippines now has almost 1,800 known cases of the highly transmissible Delta variant, but there are concerns the actual number may be far higher, as the Philippine Genome Center is only sequencing a small percentage of the positive cases. Government documents obtained by Rappler show the Philippine government's biggest supplier of medical goods during the COVID-19 pandemic has links to President Rodrigo Duterte's former economic advisor, Michael Yang. The local firm Farmily Pharmaceutical Corporation backed a total of 8.68 billion pesos worth of deals. This is the biggest contract awarded to a supplier under the Procurement for Pandemic Response in 2020. Data uploaded on the Government Procurement Policy Board website shows Farmily Pharmaceutical Corporation leading by a huge margin over other suppliers. The second top supplier, Suju Construction Machinery Group, secured only 1.9 billion pesos worth of contracts. On March 17, 2017, Yang was in a meeting between Duterte and executives of a related company, Farmly International Holdings. Before backing billions worth in COVID-19 contracts, Farmly Pharmaceutical Corporation had a capital of only 625,000 pesos, with one of its owners, Huang Su Yen, contributing 250,000 pesos. The company was only registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission on September 4, 2019. In the Philippines, to be able to qualify to bid for a government project, a company must show that it has previously committed a similar project worth at least 50% of the prospective contract budget. Farmily does not show up in the database of the Philippine Government Electronic Procurement System for any previous contract from the time it incorporated in September 2019. Need more context, clarity, and perspective? Get the full picture with Rappler Plus. With exclusive content and events, you'll get an opportunity to discuss issues with reporters, experts, and featured guests while helping Rappler continue its fearless journalism. Join now. Senator Bongo on Monday, August 30, declines the endorsement of a PDP Laban faction for him to run for president in the 2022 elections. In a letter to PDP Laban President and Energy Secretary Alfonso Cusi, Go says he would like to focus on his role as Senate Health Committee Chairman. Go says while he is honored by the endorsement, he says he is not interested in the presidency. The same PDP Laban group previously endorsed President Rodrigo Duterte as its vice presidential bet, which Duterte accepted. Meantime, the National Council Council of the original wing of the PDP Laban ousted Duterte as party chairman after electing a new set of officers on Sunday, August 29. Senator Coco Pimentel replaces Duterte, who has thrown support for the other faction led by Cusi. The party also officially elects Senator Manny Pacquiao as its president. The Cusi faction secretary general Melvin Matibag calls the Pimentel's camp election of new officers a comedy. Vice President Lenny Robredo tells President Rodrigo Duterte, if he is truly serious about ending corruption in government, he must show his net worth first. Robredo on Sunday, August 29, reminds Duterte that auditing government agencies is the mandate of the Commission on Audit, not the Vice President. Yung bandata ng VP succession lang. Pero yung isa akin lang kaili, ang daming ibang paraan pa ipakita mo na anti-corruption ka. Yung salang air. Ay, sal, isa yun sa napakalaking dahilan para ipakita mo na bukas. Mas yung lahat na information tungkol sa akin pagpapakita na walang corruption. 
Duterte earlier threatened to audit all of government should he be elected as vice president in 2022. The president has kept his statements of assets, liabilities, and net worth or sal ends secret since 2018. Robredo, meanwhile, readily makes her sal ends available, with her office quickly responding to media's requests for access. The vice president also defends COA after it drew Duterte's ire when it released audit reports showing billions of misused and unused funds in the government's pandemic response. Robredo has yet to decide if she will run for president in the 2022 elections. The National Commission on Indigenous Peoples Cordillera Administrative Region says online learning platform NAS Academy did not get the consent of Wang Od in the creation of a traditional tattooing course. This debunks NAS Academy's earlier claim. In a press statement released Sunday evening, August 29, the commission said Apple Wang Od is not aware of any contract and she did not affix her thumb mark in any contract for this account. This statement also says NAS Academy did not explain or discuss provisions of the contract. The commission says the contract was unfair or grossly onerous towards Wang Od. The commission says it will help Wang Od and her community should they decide to pursue legal action. The investigation was triggered by Wang Od's grandniece, Grace Palikas, who cried foul over the NAS Academy course, which promised to reveal all the rituals, tools, and methods for making traditional tattoos. 